Um, hi. <laughs> uh, let's see here. All right. Um, so, real quick, uh, my name's Lucy Beer. Um, I have been doing WordPress things since about 2004 and been doing training and teaching and helping people how to WordPress since around 2009. And I um, currently work for WP Rocket, which is a caching plugin, and I do customer support for those guys. So that's the boring stuff out of the way. Um, so the fun stuff, um, customizing without hacking, aka no hacks, no worries. So when we talk about hacking, we're not, in this case, talking about um, security issues. We're not talking about someone coming in and taking over your site. When we talk about hacking and not doing things in a hacky way, we're talking about hacking up the code and sort of hacking your site to pieces and uh, making a mess of it. So that's what we're trying to avoid with this whole uh, local setup and all of that so we basically want to show you guys the right way um, to do things because you know no matter what theme that you've got or plugins there's always going to be something that you're going to want to change either about your theme or, or WordPress itself um, and there are sort of good and bad ways uh, to do that and you know at some point you might get on the old Google and be like how to blah 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 my site and some guy on the internet is going to be like, oh, just go to, you know, your WordPress core files and change this file. Um, and, you know, maybe you, know, you don't know that that guy isn't speaking good truth for words to you. Um, because, I don't know if you know this, but um, not everything on the internet is true, nor should it be believed. So we want to show you some kind of best practice ways to do things um, so that you can continue to update. You can update WordPress, you can update your themes, you can update your plugins, and not lose any changes that you've done or not cause any issues. Um, you know, another important reason to kind of do things um, in the in the sort of best practice way is just to give you peace of mind and confidence. That's the whole reason that we're using desktop servers so that you can um, experiment without having any fears about breaking your site or you know creating some kind of a problem. So all of these things are designed to give you confidence so that you can test things out and um, experiment and you know not blow things up. Um, and finally, we want to do things in kind of a WordPress way. That just means you know using best practices so that um, so that you can keep updating things without breaking stuff and so that you know in the future um, maybe someone else is going to help you with your site another developer or maybe you're building sites for other people you want to do things in a way such that other people can come into the site and kind of figure out where things are and you haven't done some crazy off-the-wall thing that they don't know how to work with um, so that's kind of why we're doing things this way. Um, and there's a few things that you know are kind of no-nos when you're customizing your site. Uh, like I said, you don't want to modify the WordPress core files directly. Pretty much the only thing that you can safely edit, like we saw before, is WP config and maybe your HD access file. But all the other stuff, all the stuff when you install WordPress, that first set of files, you don't want to touch those directly at all. Um, likewise, you want to avoid changing um, your main theme files directly. Um, once you start modifying those, it means that you won't be able to update the theme without losing something. So the whole point is to keep your custom changes safe, keep them separate from your core theme uh, so that you can keep updating that. Um, but without losing your customizations. Um, and I think someone already mentioned this, but we never want to go to appearance and editor and start doing stuff in there, especially, especially with uh, PHP files. Because as I think Matt or Greg said, you can easily white screen your site if you mess around with um, PHP files and you, you know, you miss a bracket or something, your site will, will go down and you, you won't be able to access it. Um, so that's just one of the reasons we don't go in there and mess around. Um, and then we don't want a cowboy code, which Greg mentioned earlier. That just basically means doing wild and crazy things on a live site. 
um, we want to use a desktop server or something like that to do things safely. So what we're going to do today is um, I'm going to show you an example of how you can modify your CSS code, an example of modifying some PHP code, and then if we have time, we'll talk briefly about what a child theme is. Um, so the CSS is going to be an example of something that, you know, you, you might read a tutorial, for example, that says, you know, go into styles.css and make this change. So I'm going to show you a way to do that um, in a plugin so that you don't have to touch that file if you don't already have a child theme. So you should have um, the plugins that you need. But so for this example, um, we're just going to modify in 2016. We're just going to modify the uh, site title, the size of that font, and the color. Um, and I'm going to give you the code for this and for the other example so you don't have to worry about code. This is just showing you a process that you can use. Um, we're going to use a plugin called uh, Modular Custom CSS. So if you use the Lucy, if you Lucy'd your site, um, then you already have the two plugins that we'll need. But if you didn't, then you can install the plugin Modular Custom CSS. Um, so we're going to install that, and then there is a code snippet on the. Oh no, not that one. <laughs> Where is it? Ah, here we go. Oh no, what am I doing? You have it on the website. Yes, it is on the website. I'm just trying to pull it up just in case anyone. Uh, what is it? Slides. Oops. Okay, so if you go to Matt's site where he's got the slides, so for the first exercise, um, this is what we're going to be using. This right here. So you're going to um, install Modular Custom CSS. You're going to come grab those few lines of code, and then let's see here. So then when you go into, why is this? Where, where is the uh, modular custom CSS? Is it in the uh, sidebar somewhere? We got to try and yeah, <laughs> I'm like, why is my guy still here? <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to show you where to put the code. <laughs> Secretly, I actually call it the trouble plugin. Yeah. Trouble maker. Nothing but trouble. I actually kind of like it, but um, it's not going to work right now. Wait, did it deactivate? Okay, perfect. So where that shows up, you go into um, customize, and then you'll see down here at the bottom custom CSS, and you've got two boxes for this example. Uh, you're going to use the top box because we're doing something to the theme. So you're going to paste the code right in there. And why don't I do that too so you can... Can you go back one? Uh, what's your question? <laughs> Where are we pasting that code with CSS like this? Um, you go to... Customize, and then you see the custom CSS tab at the bottom? Under appearance. Appearance, customize, custom CSS, and then you get here, and then you paste it in this top box. 
and then voila, now you have a giant red site title. If you have a really long site title, it's going to look terrible probably, but it looks fine with this small one. But it's, you know, this is not necessarily how to design your site. This is just an example. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let's save and publish that. Did everyone do that? No? Who needs? Anyone need help? Wait, I saw some thumbs down over here. Where did the code come from, or how did I get here? Oh, okay, so go to Appearance, then Customize, then Custom CSS. Do you see it? Yeah, let me show you. Here? Appearance. All right, most people got there, right? Yeah? Okay. So basically, um, this plugin lets you put custom CSS changes. It's an alternative way to do that instead of using a child theme. If you just need to make a few CSS tweaks, um, you don't necessarily need to go through the process of making a child theme. You can basically just use this plugin instead. Um, and it's going to keep your code safe. And so you can continue to update uh, your main theme, and your changes will still apply. So it's just an alternate way of doing it. Is there a question over there? Yes, I mean, I was trying to plug in so I could hear you because I had to get my batteries modified. Where do I do this test? Where do I get this test? I have the plugin activated. OK, so where do you get the code? Yeah, I know that, but where do I, where do I enter the code? OK, so you go to Appearance, Customize. And then look at the bottom, there's a tab that says Custom CSS. And then you get here. All right. Um, so yeah, this is an alternate to doing changes in styles.css. But it serves the same purpose, which is keeping your changes safe. Yes? Sure. Yep. Versus the other box, the next box. Oh, good question. So the question is, what's the difference basically between using these two boxes? Um, the difference is that um, if you're modifying something in the theme itself, like we are now, you want to use the top uh, box because it's going to stay with the theme. Um, if, for example, you were modifying something about a plugin, um, I don't know, let's say you have a social sharing plugin and you want to change the font size on that, um, you would put that code in the second box because that's going to, that means that if you change the theme, your code for that plugin will still be there. So it depends on if you're modifying the theme uh, style or a plugin style. Basically, yeah. So um, I understand, like, if you modify, so in other words, if we pop, if we pop the code at the top one before the theme specifically, it doesn't matter which theme we actually use or retain the code in the CSS code, or is it just for the current theme? Um, it's going to stay, hmm. Because I understand, obviously, like, with the current theme, if, they mod if the publisher modifies the theme or whatnot, the idea is that it wouldn't touch your code here because it's not actually in the parents when you're coding. But my question is, like, if we're using 2016 right now, and we go and we mm -hmm. change to PLC 12, PLC 14, or another theme somewhere else mm -hmm. that we get, will that code still apply that we just popped in there? Um, I'm trying to remember how this plugin works. I think it will try to, okay. but um, if the class names are different, for example, then it just won't do anything. Okay, so, so you base this code off of the class names that were specific to this theme? Exactly. This okay. is code that's specific. Sorry. No, I, that's I <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is specific to uh, this particular theme. Okay, so how this will help us is if we're using this particular theme and the publisher, for whatever reason, obviously, change the theme. Um, code like through an update or something. Right. Retain. Yeah. And yeah. If we went to another thing, we need to have classes and stuff. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You got it. You got it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So it's an example of some CSS. So now we're going to do a similar thing uh, for some PHP. Okay. 
So in this example, um, what we're going to do is create a new widget area, and we're going to have it show up um, at the bottom of your page. Um, so this is something that ordinarily um, you would paste this code into functions.php, which is another theme file. Um, so again, this is, by using this plugin, My Custom Functions, we're bypassing the step of editing our theme file. Now, if you've already got a child theme that you're using, then you can do things in there. This is really if you're not at the stage where you want to create a child theme. If you just need to, um, you know, you read a tutorial that says, drop this into functions.php of your theme, then you can do it via this plugin instead. And again, your changes are going to be separate, so they're going to be safe. Um, so if you don't already have it, um, then you can install the plugin My Custom Functions. And once again, the code that you need is down here. It's the PHP snippet. So you're going to grab all of that. And then that plugin shows up um, under uh, appearance and then custom functions. What was that plugin just make sure I had activated? Uh, my custom functions. And so actually, let me. And just to chime in, it's great because if you're literally cutting and pasting off the internet and there's a mistake and your whole thing goes white, you can go in and just turn off that plugin. Everything's back again. Well, actually, even better than that, this, this plugin won't let you white screen your site, which is the amazing thing about it because PHP is super sensitive. So, um, for example, let me show you. If I just delete this bracket at the bottom and I save changes, it's going to tell me that it created an error, so it doesn't actually apply it. Now, was, if I wasn't using this plugin, if I just did it directly in functions, or God forbid I did it in appearance and editor, your site would be a white screen right now. So this one is super helpful for, you know, like a safety net, so you don't break things. Um, so it, it unfortunately doesn't tell you exactly what the problem is, but at least it won't let you break your site. Oops. But your example is perfect. It's common that you leave off that last perfect practice. Right. <laughs> No, yeah. So. Yeah. PHP doesn't is doesn't like that. So once you've sorry, was there a question? Uh, so once you've added this code, what you then should see is if you go to your widgets um, screen, now you've got a new uh, widget area called footer widget. So you can just put something in there. Let's just put the calendar, and then. It should show up. I'm not saying it's going to look awesome, but it will show up um, at the bottom of your site. Right? So adding custom widget areas and, and stuff. How do I edit? I have the Twitter widget, but there's nothing there that I can edit. Put something in it. No, no, there's no. Oh, I just drag. Just drag something in there, and then it'll show up. There you go. Blink and you missed it. Um, so did everyone, was everyone able to do that? Yeah, any issues? All good? Um, all right, so yeah, so once again, that is that will help you anytime you see something that tells you to put something in functions.php. Um, so we'll just talk really briefly about child themes. You've probably heard a lot of talk about this. Um, so a child theme is 
it's its own theme in that it has its own folder in the themes directory, but it's dependent upon another theme. So, um, you know, a common example of this is like Genesis, right? Genesis is a parent theme, and then they you can also get child themes for Genesis. So Genesis needs to exist in order for the child theme uh, to work. But a child theme can be simple. It can just be basically a style.css and a functions.php. And it's just a place where you can um, you know, customize the parent theme. Um, and again, it, it keeps everything separate so that the parent theme can continue to be updated. Um, so, you know, if you're going to do pretty extensive modifications, then you'll probably need to get into a child theme. Um, if you just need to do some CSS, you can do as we did and use modular custom CSS. If you just need to do a little bit of something in functions.php, you can just use um, my custom functions. But if you're going to do a whole new design, um, if you're going to start, definitely if you need to start editing, you know, header.php or footer.php, HP or any of those uh, main theme files, then you're definitely going to need to create a child theme. Um, and you know, if, you, if you're building sites for other people and such, then, then you probably will start getting to, to child theming. Um, so any questions? <laughs> we have a special guest via satellite. <laughs> No, that's it? No questions? All right. Well, on this slide, I have um, just some further resources if you want to go even further with your customizations. Um, the first two are sort of what we've covered today. Um, and then why and how to create a child theme. So that's going to go into more detail about the specifics that you would need to do to create a child theme. Um, functionality plugins, that's, you know, if you, oftentimes if you're building sites for other people and you have a core set of um, PHP uh, customizations that you're doing for them or certain features just for that site that are not part of the theme, but um, you can create your own functionality plugin to keep all those things. You can even put that on multiple sites if you do the same customizations for each. Um, and then WordPress hooks. So this is getting a little bit further, um, more advanced um, hooks, which again, Genesis and some other themes are make a lot of use of. And WordPress core itself has hooks. This is just a way of modifying uh, the way that WordPress behaves or the way that a theme behaves without touching the core files. Um, so anyway, that's a whole other concept, but it's there if you want to go a step further. Um, so that's all I have. So any questions about anything? Thank you. No? Cool.